Colts. I'm Matt Schutte. We're just trying to capture an idea very quickly. Jared, what are the two things that you see primarily contributing to the rise in inequality at the moment? One is globalization, and two is technology. Let's talk about globalization. Why? How does globalization... Actually, we'll start with technology. How does technology contribute to that rise in inequality? Essentially, you can outsource jobs to that used to be done by humans to machines that, as you just said, it are like slave labor, but without the motivation problem, mm -hmm. um, on all different levels of scale and all different sorts of tasks. Not every task, but many, many tasks. Yeah. And so the people who gain the skill set for how to leverage and use those machines, they are able to accumulate lots of wealth because they're not having to pay the humans mm -hmm. that they are eventually that basically replacing. And the humans that were doing some unskilled labor, they're all of a sudden out of work, and they don't have the skill set to similarly... They're, they're playing catch-up, and it's going to take a long time for them to play catch-up. Okay, so that's, that's the technology part. What about uh, globalization? Globalization allows you to go to the cheapest bidder across borders. And you can... There's just more numbers, I think, and more, more selection. And and all whether that be for jobs or whether that be whether that be for services or products, um, etc. There's just more numbers and more selection. And I'll add that it's not just that it's a bigger pool; it's that it's a pool that doesn't have a single rule set. So your regulators are actually competing against one another, right? Your regulators in China are competing against your regulators in Thailand, who are competing against your regulators in Taiwan, who are competing against regulators in Mexico and Chile and the U.S. And each of them, though they have domestic populations that are saying, hey, we would like clean water and we would like fair wages and all that other stuff, they know that if they raise their wages too high or they get too stringent on their um, environmental protection standards, that the jobs will flee elsewhere. And so there's a race to the bottom because there is no enforcement mechanism for allowing them to all agree, hey... Here's the minimum below which we will not go. The United Nations, the WTO, those things are not serving to really enable that. And I don't think they're going to. So, Jared, where do you think I'm going to take this conversation next? <laughs> you collaborative know, internet. Collaborative internet. Collaborative internet. Um, and and the, the basic gist of it, without diving into all of all the details, the way that I think this is important here is if I, as an individual in making a decision about what I'm purchasing, can see that this came from a, a manufacturer that's using labor practices I don't like, or using, or, or they are polluting something, or it's not just that manufacturer, it's their suppliers in the aggregate. If I can get a summary of all of their suppliers, or of a, a report about specific suppliers, and that is essentially effortless for me to dig up, I'm able to, to piggyback on the synthesized wisdom of the people around me, I am able to go, hmm, let's move, let me not work on that. Let me not buy that pair of blue jeans or that car. Let me instead buy this one. And what that does is it enables individuals to have control over their, their own lives about the things that they care about. Now, it does not create a single unified structure, but if we start, it, it's not, it's not a, a thing that's deterministic. It's a tool. Right? Well, the thing that will follow and, and accompany that, I believe, is the rise of etiquette and social norms that put pressure on people to behave in certain ways, to purchase things that don't support slavery or that don't pollute the rivers or whatever. So if, if I'm a sandwich shop and I'm making sandwiches and I buy bread from a company that is polluting the river, my customers might come to me and go, you know what, that's great, but we're actually going to turn to other people instead of you because we don't want to support that supplier of yours, that bread maker, in their pollution of because they pollute the river. Those customers are thus putting pressure on me to change my behavior. And there's privacy and transparency issues here. I'll go into those in other talks. Um, I think we've come to some pretty good uh, mechanisms for how to enable the community to, to balance those, but 
with that in mind, there that's the primary thing, is that each individual within the system starts to become responsive to the communities that they are interested in interacting with. And it's in those ways that we put pressure on individuals to or companies to pay their employees well or to use environmental practices that are safe, etc. Um, and not by just lobbying our government, who is also happens to be competing against every other government um, in terms of jobs and loosening of regulations, etc. Jay, any, uh, you're synthesizing. I'm Jay, trying to synthesize here. Yeah. In, um, how about give a human metric of value to external costs that globalization has continually eroded in the past? Hmm. Because you're, you're, you're measuring in some way external costs that in the past have been immeasurable, basically. Yeah. At yeah. least across a broad spectrum by which many, many people could measure them in the same terms. And they were too difficult to measure, right? right. That's really what it breaks down to. And, the, and, and to be clear here, this is kind of like the key point for me on this stuff, is it's not a metric, because a metric would require, would require agreement. And we don't, we will not have agreement about what the relative value of those different things are. The truth is, there are a lot of people in America who care much more deeply about whether or not an American is being paid paid well than about whether or not somebody in China is being paid well. Regardless of your stance on the the morality of that viewpoint, that is how they view it, right? Because one problem is close to home. We'll make it less human focused. They care more deeply about whether their local river is being polluted than whether a river in China is being polluted. They might care about both of them, but one of them matters more, and they're willing to, to, to value that higher. Is that Would you agree with that? So the, the, the basic gist of it for me is it's not the creation of the standard. It's the creation of the mechanism by which people can access the metrics that are relevant to them. So you've got all that those raw pieces of data that people have put into the system, and then the ways of aggregating that, that Jared might aggregate for himself, so he's seeing the pieces that matter synthesized and delivered the way that is appropriate for him, to co that covers the things he cares about. And I'm seeing different stuff that is what I care about and covers the sources that I trust. Um, I'll probably go into more detail on that stuff later. Other, other thoughts there? Okay. Sweet! Under eight minutes. That's like a record. <laughs> <laughs>